we have defensive coordinator Jordan Leslie. Questions for Coach Leslie, correct? Jordan, so I mean, let's go back to Saturday to start with. Just give me your overall impression defensively. Uh, what you think you did well? What didn't you do well? Um, you know, I think if you'd have told me before the game, two point, um, <clears throat> whatever, seven or nine, a rush, and we outrushed them, um, I would I would have probably told you we'd win the game. Um, we had an opportunity at two turnovers that we missed. That was probably the difference. Right before the end of half. And then right there on one of the third downs, um, <clears throat> I just didn't see the see on the one in the first half. Didn't see the ball. I think if if, if Aiden sees it and catches it, he he's got a pretty good line down the sideline with 19 seconds left to get points. Um, <clears throat> but I thought our kids fought. Um, you know, we had the one really just had one critical critical error um, there on the long explosive. You just can't do those in those games. Uh, not not even one. Um, and, and good teams, which they are, credit to them, and they make you pay. Just one side had one call. Yeah, just one a missing, missing. Mm -hmm. Just didn't see it. One side had it, one side didn't, mm -hmm. and it just happened to be <clears throat> with what they were doing, which I could see from the box and what we had called was was to combat just that, but we just missed it. Basically, an element. Mentally, how does the how does that happen? A sixty-yard pass with, with miscommunication, and how do you how do you make sure it doesn't happen again? Well, you just gotta. I mean, when you are facing a tempo team, and I think a lot of times the kids get caught in the previous play, whether that was a gain, whatever happened, or it could be a positive play, negative play for defense, doesn't matter. Um, and it's very simply play the next one. And the first thing your eyes have to do, you know, we have those systems in place. You know, we have, we have the green dot. I mean, that's one thing. But you always have a backup and a backup to your backup. And those, and those backups are, are very simply what we practice every day. Um, and, and the person talking misses it, then it, it just, it's just a miss. And you just got to keep working it. And, and that's always a priority for us. We work that every, all the time is our, our offense will do it tomorrow. The tempo, tempo. What's important is the very next signal, um, and you just can't you can't have, you know, three or four guys miss it, and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. how, how hard is it in a spot where you have a big swing of the missed field goal, and the defense has to come back out, and the momentum kind of going from one side to the other? How how difficult is that to play through that? Could that have played a part in the miscommunication? Do you think? No, I don't. No, it doesn't. Um, you just you have to in any sudden change. Um, you know, coaches use a different, different terms in different ways, but you, you, the easiest one is you have to put out the fire, whatever that is. Um, and so you, you don't, you can't worry about the last play, no matter if that was a sudden change, offensive, didn't get fourth down, interception, missed field goal, whatever it is. And they have to be ready, defensively had to be ready at all times, no matter what the situation is. And circumstances don't matter. Just play the next play. Um, and I think we did that with the exception of one play. And that's, that's the margin for error. It's not, not very big. You haven't had Aubrey a lot at times this year. How has that impacted you? And now that you sort of come up with the Tarnu Carico package to s sub for him, how do you think that's <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, they're essentially the same, same skill set, same player. Mm -hmm. um, having him to get caught up with some of the things, fundamentally terminology at that position is something we've kind of had to hit fast forward on. Um, and, and you know, we've got a really good freshman there, but he's a freshman, he's not ready. And so, um, and KK's done a phenomenal job coming in and playing that role. Um, and it's, you know, it's unfortunate for two, um, but it's, but we just gotta, you know, when you get in this part of the season, it's just next guy up and you gotta, you gotta figure it out. No matter, again, the circumstances do not matter. There two obviously different situations, mm -hmm. but sort of the same position. How, how has he done? Well, he's done a good job. Mm -hmm. Done a good job. It fits, you know, what we're asking him to do. Um, some of those sets and personnel, it kind of fits what he what he likes to do. Um, and so he, he's done. It's been good. Gives us gives us something a little bit different there. They have a stud running back and a, and a great running running game. What do you what do you know about what they're going to try to do on the ground and 
maybe even what you can maybe take from the Oklahoma State performance you guys did have against another elite running back with having success. Well, it's, <clears throat> it's it's uh you don't you don't take much other than the skill of the of the player. The schemes are are different. How they're attacking you is different. So you have to you have to just watch that. And, and there'll be some takeaways, but I mean they're they're. You know they're different backs, but they're extremely talented, and and, and they make it go. Um, you know one thing that they have always done on the offense, they're very impressive on the offensive line. They know who to block, they know how to ID, they know, you know they don't they don't do anything that gets themselves um, in a bad situation. I think they're re re extremely high um, in uh, tackle for loss numbers, and that says a lot about about their front. So they're they're a good football team. What concerns you about him? Speed. Speed, extended plays. You know, I mean, that's I think that goes hand in hand with a guy like that. Um, and he does that as well as anybody. Just watching them some on TV, how is he uh, going through progressions? Is there a lot of one read throws that you're seeing from him? Does he scan the field? I know he's got size back there. Or is he a guy that's going to, you know, <clears throat> see a throw? I think it's, it's a little bit of both. I think it depends on situationally, um, you know, what they're doing, early downs versus third downs versus two-minute versus red zone. It's all a little bit different, but it's a little bit of everything. You guys got the deck better than pretty much anybody has all season. How much can you going to take from that game to build upon against, like you said, another quarterback that can extend plays with athleticism? Yeah, you just you just have to get your – you have to get your pieces where you need them. Um, you know our front has played has played pretty well, um, continues to do so. Um, and but it's a it's a different it's a different type of uh, of quarterback. I was really impressed with with Beck and his athleticism. And, and this guy has, you know, very similar athleticism, but it's just straight out straight line speed. And so you have to <clears throat> you have to think about that as you however you're going to you know build your rushes and build your um, Particularly your early down defense and how you have to to get those guys in position and it, and it, it's not like it's big like hey we're gonna put this whole new package in it's just kind of tweaking what you do and how you rush and how you transition you know from run to pass and those type things but it, it'll be little tweaks but nothing major. Then are you more concerned with protecting the edge, keeping him from getting to the pocket to the sideline, or more for? You know, not allowing a huge inside gap where you know if you get through that, you might have a big gash play. Yeah, a huge inside gap is a way bigger problem, um, and that's you know that's where you start. You, know, you got to do some things to try to contain him, but you can't you can't take away from that and open up the inside of the offense against these guys. You know, so that's as simple as I can make it. The longer scoring drives, the ten, a couple ten plays, a seventeen play. What do you say to the guys to? Make sure that doesn't happen. Is it is or was it scheme stuff, physical stuff, or was it mental stuff, concentration stuff? In the first half, we missed more tackles than we have. Um, that was one of those. There's there's two that stick out to me. Uh, I can't I can't remember one first half, one second half, third downs. Um, one was was a was a drop, and the other one was a missed tackle. Um, you know, you the the thing is, we get, we knew going into the game. Third and medium, you know, when you talk about three to six in that range. And that was something that we had to try to stay out of. And, you know, what they do offensively, early down wise, like first down's the key down. And, you know, if you're if you're playing second and five to six to seven, and, and it's not that hard to get to third and three to four to five. Right. And so then <clears throat> then you have to you know, you have to tighten things up, and very simply, you had to make plays on the ball, and and we didn't do that. Saw them, um, new coordinator, new quarterback, just different style. How much has changed for them? Not very much. Similar. Okay. Set very similar. Um, speed at receiver kind of always been like a, a sleepy, sneaky concept for them. They've kind of had guys who can run too. Um, mm -hmm. That seems like it's there too. Has that opened up their passing game? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's in. You know, when you can take those guys and and move them in different positions, and you're having to try to find um, where they are, and then now for where they are is now what are the concepts that you're getting that you're getting off of that? Um, you know, there's really 13 probably 
Um, had the speed, nine had the size, but like you said, it's sneaky. They they were sneaky, sneaky fast, and then 18, the tight end, who's a um, you know a good passing threat for them. Um, but you just have to, again, I, you know, I said this last week, like that team's going to make you adjust as you go in, and you're and you're you're constantly playing a chess match. But I thought I thought we had our opportunities. There's no question about it in the game. I mean, look up in the third quarter, going into the fourth. You know, they you know our kids. You know, they fought their ass off to get to that position. Um, we just, you know, one or two plays here, there. You have to make in that game, particularly third down, and you can't have the one big bust. Um, but you have to make them, and and we just didn't. The consensus has been for everyone we talked to today. Look, this, it was there. There, we had opportunities. There was a, there was a lot that, that we that really could have been different. When you talk to them afterwards and say, like yesterday, today, um, what do you say to them because of the way last game ended? It's in order to be more effective in having to brush it off and get focused on the next. Yeah, I mean, you just very simply look at the mistakes and you make the corrections. And and here's the thing: like I could go back to to our three losses defensively at least, and I could go through each one of those games against really good opponents, and I can. I can get it down to a handful, and those are those are I think it's proven those are good football teams, and you can't you know that's the margin for error, and you just have to we have to just keep getting better and keep practicing and keep finding those four to five whatever it is those few plays, um, and our whole league is like that, and and that's the way it's. You know that's the way it's going to be for the rest of the season. That's just what our what our league is, and so, you know, you don't. It's not. You know, I told them after the game, like we didn't we didn't get to winning the last two <clears throat> by panicking and and you know oh oh you know but hey here's what we did wrong, here's what we have to fix, and here's what we have to continue to get better at, and that's all you can do. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not down on them. Don't feel any different about them. You know, like I said, I thought they fought their ass off. And they give themselves a chance, but in critical situations, particularly third downs, red zone, when when the, the when the play is there, we have to make it. And no matter in, in circumstances like you know officials, not, none of that matters. All right, that's a really good football team. Had you know, just like the ones before, and one coming in Saturday, really good football teams, and you have to make those plays in critical areas of the field and in critical situations. And if we didn't, you have to look back and why, fix it and move on. And you can't like, you know, nobody, you know, nobody's going to get better by dwelling, dwelling on it. It's fix it and go. On the, on the, oh, go ahead, Greg. Your thoughts on your D-line rotation, especially some of the sort of younger guys, Redwood, <clears throat> Russell, even kids are getting a lot of snaps now, seemingly. What's your thought on those Yeah, guys? you got to grow up fast mm -hmm. in this environment. I mean, it's just. And again, in our league, you know, those those things are going to happen. Um, you know, Nate Gabriel is is one that that uh, has got to grow up, got to grow up fast. Um, and 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 I say grow up, and like games like that, you know, there there was one or two criticals where some of those guys were in, and they have to understand. There may be one or two plays, but it's the it's the magnitude of where you're at, particularly down there close to the to the goal line, where they have to perform. Um, and youth doesn't I'm not going to use that as an excuse. It's got we got to grow, we got to get better. I got a quick one here. Um, I don't know how many games you studied with them, but that that, he's, that kid's been sacked eight times for an athletic kid. That's a that's a, that's a lot. Do you see a common thing there that he's been sacked eight times? No, I mean I think. I think, um, I think a couple of those were BYU. BYU did a good job, changed some things up on them. Um, obviously, they're good. They're good in Provo. Um, but I, no, I don't really see a common theme. I think a lot of times, um, you know, those uh, whether they tell them to run or not. I think I think even though a lot of times they're athletic quarterbacks, they still, they still have the quarterback mentality and maybe they press a little bit, try to make a throw. That's, that's all I say. I don't really see a common okay. common theme with it. I was just going to ask the penalty in, in the end zone there that eventually led to them scoring. When it's 14-10? Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you could teach there in terms of your player to avoid that scenario? or? 
I don't. Let me, see, let me be careful here. Yeah, I'm not trying to get you. No, 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 no. I know. It it really doesn't matter. I've been in trouble for it. I, um, all I saw was a ball. I think probably hit the front of Ruby. Was that pass? It hit the front of Ruby, I think, or in the band somewhere. <laughs> That's what I saw. Thank you, Coach. Thank y'all.